To imagine matter to have an existence outside the mind is indeed a deception. The perceptions we observe may well be coming from an artificial source. It is possible to see this in the mind's eye by an example. First, let us suppose that we could take our brain out of our body and keep it alive in a glass jar. Let us put a computer in which all kinds of information can be recorded. Finally, let us transmit the electrical signals of all the data related to a setting, such as image, sound and smell, to this computer. Let us connect this computer to the sensory centers in our brain with electrodes and send the pre-recorded data to our brain. As our brain perceives these signals, it will see and live the setting correlated with these. From this computer, we can send to our brain also signals pertaining to our own image. For instance, we can send to our brain the electrical correlates of such senses as sight, hearing and touch that we perceive while we sit at a desk. In that state, our brain would think itself as a businessman sitting in his office. This imaginary world would continue as long as the stimulations keep coming from the computer. We would never realize that we only consist of a brain. It is indeed very easy for us to be deceived into believing perceptions without any material correlates to be real. This is just what happens in our dreams. For you, reality is all that can be touched with the hand and seen with the eye. In your dreams, you can also touch with your hand and see with your eye. But in reality, you have neither hand nor eye, nor is there anything that can be touched or seen. Taking what you perceive in your dream to be material realities, you are simply deceived. For example, a person deeply asleep in his bed may see himself in an entirely different world in his dream. He may dream that he is a pilot and command a giant airplane, and even spend a great effort to command the plane. In fact, this person has not taken even one step away from his bed. In his dreams, he may visit different settings and meet with friends have a chat with them, eat and drink together. It is only when the person awakes from his dream that he realizes all were only perceptions. If we are able to live easily in an unreal world during our dreams, the same thing can equally be true for the world we live in. When we wake up from a dream, there is no logical reason for not thinking that we have entered a longer dream that we call real life. The reason we consider our dream to be fancy and the world is real is nothing but a product of our habits and prejudices. This suggests that we may well be awoken from the life on earth which we think we are living right now just as we are awoken from a dream. After all these physical facts arises the question of primary importance. If all physical events that we know are intrinsically perceptions, what about our brain? Since our brain is a matter just like our arms, legs, or any other object, it also must be a perception just like all other objects. An example will illuminate the subject further. 
Let us think that we extend the nerves reaching our brain and put it outside our head, where we can see it with our eyes. In this case, we would be able to see also our brain and touch it with our fingers. This way, we can understand that our brain is also nothing but a perception formed by the senses of vision and touch. Then, what is the will that sees, hears, and perceives all other senses if it is not the brain? Who is it that sees, hears, touches, and perceives the taste and smell? Who is this being that thinks, reasons, has feelings, and moreover that says, I am me? One of the important thinkers of our age, Carl Prebram, also poses the same question. Since the Greeks, philosophers have been thinking about the ghost in the machine, the small man within the small man, etc. Where is I, the person who uses his brain? Who is it that realizes the act of knowing? As St. Francis of Assisi said, what we search for is the one that sees. In fact, this metaphysical being that uses the brain, that sees and feels, is the soul. What we call the material world is the aggregate of perceptions viewed and felt by this soul. Just as the bodies we possess and the material world we see in our dreams have no physical reality, the universe we occupy and the bodies we possess now also have no physical reality. The real absolute being is the soul. Matter consists merely of perceptions viewed by the soul. Yes, even if we start with the presupposition that matter is real, the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology all lead us to the fact that matter consists of an illusion and to the inevitable actuality of a metaphysical matter. This is the secret beyond matter. This fact is so definite that it alarms some materialist scientists who think matter to be the absolute being. Science writer Lincoln Barnett says in his book, The Universe in Einstein, along with philosophers' reduction of all objective reality to a shadow world of perceptions, scientists have become aware of the alarming limitations of man's senses. All these facts bring us face to face with a very significant question. If the thing we acknowledge to be the material world is merely comprised of perceptions given to our soul, then what is the source of these perceptions? In answering this question, we must consider the fact that matter does not have a self-governing existence by itself, but it is a perception. Therefore, this perception must have been caused by another power, which means that it must have been created. Moreover, this creation must be continuous. If there were not a continuous and consistent creation, then what we call matter would disappear and be lost. This may be likened to a television on which a picture is displayed as long as the signal continues to be broadcast. If the broadcast stops, the image on the screen will also disappear. So, who makes our soul see the earth, people, plants, our bodies, and all else that we see? It is very evident that there is a superior creator who has created the entire material universe. That is, the sum of all perceptions, and continues his creation ceaselessly. Since this creator displays such a magnificent creation, he surely has eternal power and might. All the perceptions he creates are dependent on his will, and he dominates everything he has created at any moment. This